Hey kiddos, welcome back. We're continuing our discussion on acids and bases. And we're going to talk today about something called neutralization. Now, the simple definition for neutralization is a reaction between an acid and a base. That's pretty simple, isn't it? So let's take this uh, simple example here where we have hydronium ions. Remember, hydrogen ions in water actually exist as H3O pluses. And hydroxide ions, which is my base. Now the hydroxide ions can accept one of those three protons. So one of those are accepted by the hydroxide to form a water molecule, H2O. And when I take a proton away from that hydronium ion, I have H2O remaining. So I have something that loses a proton and something that gains a proton. So I have an acid and a base, and I form two water molecules from it. We have neutralized the acid with the base, or you could say you've neutralized the base with the acid. Now, let me give you... Um, a pretty common example. In fact, whenever neutralization reactions are given, this particular example is commonly used. It's the reaction between hydrochloric acid, HCl, and sodium hydroxide. Now, the hydrochloric acid will lose that proton to the hydroxide ion to form water, and then the Na plus and Cl minus will form NaCl. Now, if I were to write this ionically, and that's the next line, I would have to write my hydrochloric acid as ions. Remember, hydrochloric acid is one of your strong acids, which means when it's placed in water, it ionizes 100% of the time. So it forms H plus ions and Cl negative ions 100% of the time. They don't stick together. Remember? Likewise, sodium hydroxide is a strong base. That means it dissociates 100% of the time when I place those in water. So I have Na plus sodium ions and hydroxide ions in water. And when I mix these together, that proton is attracted to that hydroxide. And I form water, H2O, which is neutral. Now, I also have NaCl which of course is soluble in water. So I form sodium ions and chloride ions. Both of those are neutral. So I go from having an acid, hydrochloric acid, and a base, sodium hydroxide, to form something neutral. Now, I have some spectator ions in this equation, so let's cancel those. There's a chloride on this side, and a chloride on that side, and sodium on this side, and sodium on the other side. So you'll see, after the spectators are removed, I have H plus and OH minus make H2O. And that's my net ionic equation for this reaction. Now, recall that an aqueous solution Hydrogen ions actually exist as hydronium ions, H3O positives. So the actual net ionic equation for this particular reaction is H3O pluses and OH minuses form two waters, just like what we had above. Okay? Now, you might think that the net ionic equation for all acid and base reactions is what I've just shown you, but that's not the case. Let's go through some other examples. Um, for example A, I have a strong base, uh, potassium hydroxide, just like sodium hydroxide in the previous example, and a strong acid, hydrobromic acid. That's strong just like hydrochloric acid was in the previous example. Let's write the molecular reaction for this reaction. Now these are all going to be double replacement reactions. So the K plus will replace the H plus and the H plus will replace the K plus. So we end up with KBr and as you recall 
All potassium compounds are soluble, so I'm going to put an AQ after that. And the H plus is gained by the hydroxide to form H2O. And those guys stick together. So we're going to put an L after that. Now, let's write this ionically. So for, to do this, we need to know whether our base is strong and whether our acid is strong. If they're strong, we need to separate them in water. If they're weak, remember, they stick together most of the time. So, as we just said, KOH is a strong base. So, that will dissociate 100% of the time when I place it in water. So, it will form actually K plus ions and hydroxide ions in water. HBr likewise. That's a strong acid. So, that will ionize 100% of the time when we place it in water into H plus and be our negative ions. Now on the product side, we need to use our solubility rules for the salt that is produced. So I make KBr. All ionic compounds are considered to be salts. This particular salt is soluble. All potassium compounds are soluble. So in water, I have K plus ions, AQ, and Br negative ions, AQ and we will leave our water molecule together. Water sticks together. Let's cancel out our spectator ions now. So let's see here. The Br negatives cancel out. They're the same on both sides. And what else does? Looks like the K pluses cancel out. So, net ionically, I have OH minuses, AQ, and H pluses, AQ form, H2O liquid. And that will always be the net ionic equation between a strong base reacting with a strong acid. Now what if they're not both strong? Well, let's take a look at the next example. Let's change colors here so it doesn't get too confusing. Let's take a strong base, potassium hydroxide, and let's react that with the weak acid, HNO2, nitrous acid. So, it's still a double replacement reaction. The K plus and the H plus will switch partners. So, I'll end up with KNO2, and potassium compounds are all soluble, and H and OH form water. So, there's my molecular equation. Now, ionically is where things are a bit different than in the previous example. KOH, of course, is still a strong base. So, that will dissociate 100% in water. So K pluses and OH minuses. However, HNO2 is a weak acid. And weak acids do not ionize very, very well in water. They do a little bit. For the most part, though, they stick together. So in the ionic equation, I need to show them as sticking together as a molecule. They do not ionize. Now on the product side, I need to use my solubility rules again. KNO2 is the salt that's formed. And all potassium compounds, as you recall from your solubility rules, are soluble. So that would exist as potassium ions and nitrite ions in water. And of course, H2O sticks together. So we form H2O liquid. So that's our ionic equation. Now let's cancel out our spectator ions. And we aren't going to be able to cancel out as many this time. Looks like the K plus is the same on both sides, but nothing else will cancel. So when I write the net ionic equation, I have OH minuses remaining and the HNO2 molecules remaining. Remember, they did not split up. On the product side, I have nitrite ions and water. Now you can check to see if that balances, and I can assure you it does. Remember when you check to see if an equation balances, two things actually have to balance. The atoms have to balance, so I have to have the same number of nitrogens, hydrogens, and oxygens on both sides, but the charge also needs to balance. And you'll notice on the left-hand side I have a one negative charge, and on the right-hand side I have a one negative charge, so the charge balances as well. All right. 
Now, what about the next one? Uh, ammonium hydroxide and nitric acid. Now, this kiddos is an example of a weak base with a strong acid. These are still double replacement reactions. So the ammonium will get together with the nitrite, nitrate, excuse me, so we'll form NH4NO3, and all ammonium compounds are soluble, so that's an AQ. And H will get together with OH again, so I'll form water, which sticks together. So why don't you take a crack at this and try to write the ionic equation for this reaction. So pause the video and take an attempt at writing the ionic equation, then come back and see how you did. Okay? All right, welcome back. Now, ammonium hydroxide, kiddos, let's change colors here, is, uh, as you recall, um, a weak base. So weak bases will not dissociate um, or ionize very well in water. So I'm going to leave that together as NH4OHs. And my strong acid, HNO3, that does ionize in water. So H pluses and and O3 negatives. On the product side, I have a salt. This time my salt is ammonium nitrate. Um, and all ammonium compounds are soluble. So that would exist as ammonium ions and nitrate ions. And of course, water, as we've said several times, sticks together. Let's cancel out our spectator ions now. There aren't as many again. This nitrate We'll cancel out on both sides, but that's it. Nothing else is the same. So now we can write the net ionic, which would include NH4OH and H pluses on the reactant side form NH4 pluses, AQ, and water. So um, you will notice my net ionic equation um, does not reduce down to the same net ionic equation that I had when I had a strong base with a strong acid earlier. Instead, the weak acid sticks together, and this proton will get together with that hydroxide. Remember, the hydroxide will attract that proton to form water, and I have ammonium ions remaining. Now, some people think in neutralization reactions, the pH will be 7 um, at what's called the equivalence point. And that's when I have equal moles of base and acid. However, that's not the case. Notice, in this particular example, I make ammonium ions when this is neutralized. And if you remember from a previous video on hydrolysis, ammonium ions are actually acidic. So when this reaches the equivalence point, the pH will be below 7. It's an acidic solution um, at the equivalence point. Now in the example above, we made nitrite ions. And if you remember from the hydrolysis video, nitrite ions are basic. So in the example above, when I reach the equivalence point, which means I have equal moles of base and acid, this solution would be basic. Okay? All right. Why don't you try letter D all by your lonesomes, and then come back to the video, and we'll see how you did. See you in a second. All right. Welcome back. So now we have potassium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. Now sulfuric acid is H2SO4. So I'm going to need two hydroxides here, aren't I, to neutralize both of those hydrogen ions. So I'm going to put a 2 here to give me two hydroxides to neutralize those two hydrogen ions. Now let's do our double replacement reaction. Potassium is positive 1. Sulfate is negative uh, 2. So we make K2SO4, and all potassium compounds are soluble, so I'm going to put an AQ after that. And these two hydrogen ions will get together with these two hydroxides to form two water molecules. So that one was a little bit tricky. If you miss that one, I'll let you slide. Now, with the molecular equation, see if you can do the ionic equation.
So pause the video and try to write the ionic equation for this reaction. Then come back and see how you did. Alrighty, welcome back. So let's see, two KOHs. Well, potassium hydroxide is a strong base, so that means it will dissociate 100% of the time, both of those KOHs. So when that happens, I'll form two potassium ions and two hydroxide ions, won't I? H2SO4 is a strong acid. So that will ionize to form two H pluses and an SO4 2 negative. Now, technically, some people will tell you that you don't form two hydrogen ions there, but for right now and for this class, you do. You've done it correctly if you've done it that way. On the product side, potassium sulfate, your salt is soluble. So when that dissolves, you will form two K pluses and a sulfate ion. And your water molecules will stick together. So two H2Os. And we'll put it now after that. Now, that's your ionic equation. So take a minute now, pause the video a third time, cross off your spectators, and write your net ionic equation for me. All right, welcome back. Looks like the sulfates cancel out on both sides, and both of these potassiums cancel out, don't they? So let's write down what we have left. Two OH minuses remain. Two H pluses remain and you form two H2O liquids. And of course, that can reduce down to OH minus and H plus make H2O, which you should have expected because this was a strong acid with a strong base. Okay? Alrighty. Hopefully you've learned a little bit about neutralization reactions, and hopefully I've impressed upon you to learn your strong acids and your strong bases. If you don't know those, you're going to have a very difficult time doing these properly. All right? See you soon, kiddos. Bye-bye.